Yellowstone geysers toxic emissions. Mercury is being sprayed from the geysers, geologists reveal. USGS reports toxic substances. Hydrology program, environmental health review. Mercury from Yellowstone's geysers. USGS scientists sample Ear Spring, Yellowstone National Park, for example, for dissolved mercury species. Old Faithful is erupting in the background in some of these things that we see here. Mound Spring, Sentinel Meadows, Yellowstone National Park. Heat-loving microbes form mats at Octopus Geyser in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming. The mats bioaccumulate mercury in water that is discharged from the geysers. The USGS scientists collect the water samples from the springs and testing for various substances. Yellowstone supervolcano is not as large a source of mercury to the atmosphere as once was thought. Although mercury occurs naturally in hot springs, its most toxic form, methyl mercury, appears to be entering the food chain largely by accumulating in slimy microbial mats. Furthermore, the use of mercury isotopes holds promise for an increased understanding of the sources, pathways, and fate of geothermal mercury at Yellowstone. These are some of the findings of a group of U.S. geologists, U.S. Geological Survey geologists, scientists, and their colleagues who have been studying the dynamics of mercury in the thermal features of Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, meaning, of course, the geysers, mud pots, fumaroles, fissures, all these things. Now, Yellowstone is not as large a source of mercury to the atmosphere as once was thought. For years, many scientists speculated that Yellowstone might have been one of the largest natural mercury emission sources on the planet. To test this assumption, scientists set up the USGS Mobile Atmospheric Mercury Laboratory to measure atmospheric mercury emissions around Yellowstone National Park. Instead, they found that wildfires burning outside of the park released appreciably more mercury to the atmosphere than the geothermal sources inside the park. Methyl mercury occurs naturally in hot springs, they say. The first data on the chemical forms speciation of mercury in the geothermal springs of Yellowstone National Park confirmed that methyl mercury occurs naturally in many, but not all, of the park's hot springs. Methyl mercury is a very toxic form of mercury that readily bioaccumulates in food webs and can reach levels that pose health risks to people and animals that eat fish. The measured concentrations of total mercury and methyl mercury were highly variable in both location and time. Microbial mats are a source of methyl mercury to food webs. The scientists also found that the heat-loving thermophilic bacteria that form the, micro, the microbial mats that are formed in many of Yellowstone's geothermal springs bioaccumulate methyl mercury. The scientists also found that larvae feeding on the microbial mats had methyl mercury concentrations two to five times higher than the microbial mat concentrations. This indicates that the microbial mats are an important source of methyl mercury to Yellowstone's food web. Mercury isotopes are a potentially promising way to trace mercury sources. The scientists are using the ratio of naturally occurring mercury isotopes present in Yellowstone's geothermal waters to trace or identify sources of mercury to the environment. In many cases, different sources of mercury will have different isotopic ratios. Measuring this ratio in an environmental sample along with knowledge of the isotopic ratios that are characteristic of the different sources of mercury has the potential to enable scientists to determine where mercury contamination came from. The results of these studies have increased our understanding of the origins, transport, and fate of mercury from Yellowstone's geothermal areas. In addition, new insights have been gained on the relative contributions of natural versus human mercury sources 
and local verse versus regional mercury sources, land managers, health professionals, and environmental regulators can use this understanding to develop sound policy regarding the potential exposure of animals and humans to methyl mercury. Now, there has recently been uh, an event where they have found some bisons uh, that had fallen to the side of the road and uh, the geologists figured that it was not mercury poisoning but it was carbon dioxide poisoning, gas emissions from the volcanoes. The carbon dioxide is heavier than air and it goes lower down. That's what could have caused the bison deaths. It was about five animals. We recently had a uh, fish kill in uh, Yellowstone as well, in the Yellowstone River, fish die off. And the geologists believe that it could have been some kind of a parasite that hit the Yellowstone River near Livingston, Montana. And uh, it appeared in the summer, late August, when they had uh, a decrease of runoff and rainwater, which caused a reduction of the waters in the river. And they believe that the Yellowstone River that uh, made headlines concerning this uh, fish die off was due to a parasite. Biologists counted 4,000 dead whitefish floating in the Yellowstone River or that washed ashore. They estimated that the true number is in tens of thousands. And they recently spotted rainbow trout, trout at Yellowstone, cutthroat trout um, going belly up as well. And they're both economically important species there. It's a devastating scene. State officials said that they were worried about this and they had closed a 183-mile stretch of river and all of its tributaries until further notice. The uh, boats and inner tubers, even swimming dogs, were not allowed to go into the water. The culprit was a tiny contagious parasite called Tetracalsula brio salmonella, salmonae, salmonae, which exclusively attacks the fish. It worms its way into the fish's kidneys where it causes prol prol uh, proliferative kidney disease and can obliterate fish populations, according to the state biologists. They, they stated that uh, it's been What's happening is if the hot summer is hot, the stream flows are diminished, historically low. There are stressful conditions that make cold adapted fish populations ripe for a deadly disease outbreak. And the river closure was meant to keep the parasites out of other rivers to keep fishers and boaters from further taxing six, the sick fish. It was considered one of the worst parasites for salmonid fisheries in the US and Europe and it was a complicated parasite. They had to uh, get uh, the perfect storm on uh, the Yellowstone River and uh, quell it. The fish kill shook people's lives in Livingston, a small river town, just over 7,000 people. Culturally and economically defining its share of Montana's $343 million fishing industry there. And downtown at the uh, Brewing Company, Catabatic Brewing Company, uh, they were serving drinks, worried about fishing guides who were already contemplating career changes because they were depending deeply on the Yellowstone as a resource, not just for water, but for recreation and their economy. They were worried that the fish kill is not a short-term thing, but a glimpse into what is to be coming for Southwest Montana in the future concerning, concerning climate and uh, because of the fact it's getting hotter and drier. So in this case of bad things, Yellowstone was the Yankee Stadium of fly fishing, as one fishery biologist said, with its headwaters protected by Yellowstone National Park, the river was long remaining healthy for native species such as the Yellowstone cutthroat trout. It's the longest river in the lower 48 states. 
that has no reservoir taming its flows thanks to efforts resisting a major dam proposed in the 1970s. But the recent whitefish kill shows that uh, when the climate changes and pathogens proliferate into new regions, even the healthy rivers like the Yellowstone are at risk. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.